media team did such an amazing job putting that together, and uh, uh, they're so good, and there's no way to capture all that we've done uh, in video, and that was like a seven-minute video, and they were like, do we put more? We're like, no, that's long, <laughs> and so, but it's amazing that we've had such an awesome, awesome time this year just impacting lives, and despite what's going on around the world, we've always committed to be that church. We've committed to be a church that's going to serve our community and not allow the things that are going on around us to impact how we serve God and that we will never uh, allow joy not to be a part of our life. See, happiness is something that's circumstantial. And you could be happy one moment and not happy the next moment. I say this all the time, but we must cling on to the joy of the Lord because that's our strength. Amen. Amen. So how many of y'all got some of these cool glasses uh, when you guys came in? Some of y'all got them on and sporting them on one side. It says Vision 2022 or 22. And so this is our Vision Sunday. And so all month long we'll be talking about Vision. And so we wanted uh, to give you uh, a little memoir, so to speak, uh, so that you guys can look cool as you're driving through the snow on today. Amen. <laughs> And so do me a favor, you guys, take a selfie at some point, not now when you guys leave. Take a selfie and tag us and allow us to just go ahead and keep some of those photos. So maybe next year when we make the video, you might make the cut for next year's video. I know that that's what some of you guys dream to do and aspire. Amen. All right. So here we are. It's 2022. How many of y'all glad you made it? Amen. And so, listen, I know that, uh, that, that the pedal is to the metal, and some of us are just kind of like 2022, 20, full throttle, full speed ahead. But as I was preparing and as I was praying, the Lord began to show me that there are some individuals that are just uh, are glad they're in 2022, and they're trying to get as far away from 2021 as possible. Right, Like, I don't want to go through the hangups that I went through last year again. I don't want to go through some of the heartaches and some of the issues. How many of y'all, that's your thought process? Amen. Shame the devil, right? And so, but God began to, to, to shift my thinking on it. We can't try to live 2022 not trying to repeat 2021. We have to begin to cling on to 2022 and the things that we're desiring because the more we look back, the more we're stuck in the 2021 year. And here's, there's this thing called uh, uh, the inocular driving. Inocular driving is you drive in a direction where your eyes are looking. Right? Have you ever seen somebody hit a deer? Their tire marks are kind of going off the road. Why? Because they were looking at the deer the entire way, and they wind up hitting the deer because that's what they were looking at, and that's where they drove. And so that is how we operate and how we function. So many of us are fighting against going back to the things that we experienced in 2021. You're looking at them so much that guess where you're going to end up at? And I don't want the boo that I had in 2021 because they just didn't treat me right. And you're looking back at all the stuff they did, and guess what you're going to be finding yourself at? Right? And you're going to be looking at all of the hurts, the hangups, the hiccups, all of these things. And I don't want to go back there. And, and here's the deal. You can only push as far as time will allow you. You can't push the pedal to the metal quicker than time will allow you to. And so the mindset should be that in 2022, it will produce a greater peace that I have ever experienced in my life before. Can we commit to that? All right. And 2022 will excel. My life will excel and I will begin to dream again. Can we commit to that? Uh, do we have some folks or is your mind and your mouth frozen because the cold has got you? Are y'all going to help me today? And can 2022, you begin to laugh more and experience life more? Because here's the deal that some of y'all have gotten to a place where you don't laugh a whole lot because you're just waiting for the next bomb to explode. How many of y'all are waiting for the next bomb to explode, the next issue to happen, the next person to talk about you, the next person to, to stick the knife further and deeper in your back? And we're waiting for, the, for that moment. And so 2022, we just got to say, you know what, I'm not waiting for the bomb to explode. I'm believing that God has has a hedge of protection over my life, and I'm believing that God is going to cut them off and stop them before they even get near me. I'm believing that God is going to put the right people around me at the right time that will make me more better. Somebody say more better. More better. Mo better. That's what we have to shift our mind to and push forward 
to having something that we've never had. To have something that you've never had, guess what you got to do? You guys are very good students. Hallelujah. You get theologian degrees in here today. All of you are licensed apostles, and I'm sending you out into the mission field. You passed the test. To have something that we've never had, we have to begin to do things that we've never done. And to, for some of us, that requires maybe getting rid of a poverty mentality. But, uh, spending it before it's gone. For some of us, it requires us thinking a little, a little better of ourselves, right? Uh, and, uh, allowing ourselves to have a little bit more confidence in ourselves. And that thing that you hate about you the most, yeah, that thing that you look in the mirror and say, God, why did you have to wait, make one eye lower than the other? You better wear it with pride. Because <laughs> God made you perfect. In his way. And so we got to get over ourselves. See, a snake is slithery and slimy, and it even sheds itself from itself. Some of our, our breakthrough begins up here. See, most of us are asking God, God, I need a breakthrough, and God, I need for you to do this, and God, I need for you to do that, and God, send down all the warring angels from heaven. Send a battalion against me <laughs> because you are your greatest opponent. And so in this year, we can't get away from the things of our past. We just got to begin to grab forward. It's almost like we're driving a car. If you drove a car and you constantly had your view on the rear view mirror, you're going to crash in something ahead of you or with something ahead of you because you're constantly looking back at the things that you've already passed. You've already passed that test. You've already passed that issue. You've already passed that hanger. Why hold on to it? We can't wear it like a little, like a, 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 a reminder. We got, to, we got to begin to let it go like that song. I was so eager to get into this message. I almost got into it because, because it's like the, the movie, uh, uh, whatever the name of the movie is. I think I watched it for the first time not too long ago, but let it go. Let it go. Can't hold me back anymore. Can I make it on the worship team? Should I audition? Stick to preaching, huh? I knew it. I knew it. So whatever you're going through, God wants to make you new. Now, for some of us, that seems like a really hard thought. Like, you don't know what I've done. <laughs> well, you don't know what I've done. Well, I, I'm a bad mamma jamma. <laughs> I be, I, I, listen, I'll go to hell with the water pistol. Well, you don't know what I've been through. See, some of us think that there is no way that God can make you new. But let's go to the story of Ezekiel. See, the Lord was speaking through the prophet Ezekiel and helping him to be a voice to let the people, his people, know that they will be restored despite some of the things that they were doing. And this is what Ezekiel chapter 36 verse 26 says. It says, I will give you who? You, me. Somebody say me. I will give you, me, a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Now, a heart of stone, or as defined in scripture, is a hard heart. In other words, a very cold and unfeeling nature, no sympathy. And this is what happens in our life when we go through different situations. It's almost like we get a hard heart. We get to a place where we almost lack sympathy, where we lose all kind of feelings. If I'm not careful as a pastor, I can get to a place where I can preach a message with a hard heart. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Can I get any more transparent than that? Some of y'all think y'all got it hard. My job is to make everybody happy and nobody happy all at the same time. Somebody say, aw. <laughs> Quit feeling sorry for me. And so you could get to a place where situations can happen and all of a sudden you begin to have this hard heart and you completely are uh, are detached emotionally and and what God is saying is I need you to get to a place where you don't have a hard heart. When we have a hard heart, you cannot hear from God. Why? Because the things that brought you to a place of a hard heart speak louder than the voice of God. 
They speak much louder than, than what you can hear God speaking. And so we have to get to a place of allowing ourselves to open up our ear by letting go of the things that have gotten us to a place of a hard heart. Seven things that speak louder. Number one, a lack of understanding. See, some of us, when we have a hard heart, we lose an, an open perspective of seeing another view. Has anybody ever tried to explain something to you and for some reason you lose complete track of hearing what they're trying to say because you're so busy trying to explain your side? And somebody could be explaining to you and making it plain as day, but you cannot see it any other way. And uh, your hard heart removes any idea that any other way is possible. Well, let me let you in on a little secret. You have a way, but not the way. And so if we can open our eyes and our ears and our hearts towards heaven, then the heavens will be able to show you a different perspective. But with a hard heart, you won't be able to see any other way well I drink because well I use because well I just allow people in my life because and and we begin to justify our behaviors because we refuse to see that any other way is possible the second is bitterness and resentment how many of y'all have ever been out of place of bitterness and resentment and all of these things, all of these things, they come with companions like hate and anger, right? And wrath, and it becomes so difficult. And once you're bitter at somebody, baby, <laughs> whoo, how many of y'all know what I'm talking about? Once you have, you get to that place, you don't want to hear from them. It doesn't matter how many sorries they give, it doesn't, it requires an act of God for you to be able to move from that place. Isolation from God and others. How many of y'all think that you're better all by yourself when you're all upset? That's a lie from the devil. Some of y'all didn't raise your hand. It's like, I feel like there's a trick question. I feel like it's a trick question. You think that you are better all by yourself? The devil is a liar. Listen, the times when you're all by yourself, have, have, have you ever called a loved one and they didn't pick up the phone and all of the worst crossed your mind? Like, oh my gosh, this happened and that happened and, and you're calling everybody and did you see so-and-so? And I recently saw a family member uh, trying to call her mom and when she couldn't reach her after calling her two times, she puts on social media, if somebody see my mama, tell her to call me. Like I was in the shower washing my hair. Can you hold on, child? <laughs> See, when we isolate ourselves, we begin to put ourselves into a position that nobody loves me and nobody cares and I'm worthless and, and there's no reason for me to continue on and what gifts do I have and can God even use me and, and if I walk into the church house, everybody's going to look at me. Ain't nobody looking at you. Nobody knows you, but you're just walking around like you did something. Like, you're walking around like. Usher says, how do you, you know, they know, they know, they know, they know, they know. I knew it. I knew it. They know. Ah! <laughs> That's how y'all do, right? And you're going to sit in your seat like, oh, pastor's going to call me out. The Lord is going to give him a word. He's going to prophesy over me today. But here's the deal. Listen. Nobody knows. It's this shame that the, that the enemy tries to put upon you. And, and, and we have to come to a place of saying, you know what? If people know, thank God. If people find out about the stuff, thank God that people can hold you to a level of accountability. Not to shame you, but to, to walk alongside you and say, listen, you might have fallen down, but we can get back up together and we can do life together. We can be renewed. We can be renewed. Number four, this is one of the toughest ones, isn't it? Refusal to forgive. I ain't forgiving nothing. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't letting it go. Meet me outside, how about that? 
If I catch them, ooh, I can't wait. Ooh. Y'all be hyping yourselves up and then doing like the little gangster thing. Like, ooh. But here's the deal. You're being a prisoner in your own mind. See, half of the people that we feel offended by don't even realize that they've offended us. See, some people are, there's probably somebody in this room, but like, I'm going to sit on the other side because, you know, who's over there, and they're going to affect my, I might just accidentally reach over and worship, and when the pastor tells everybody to raise their hand, I'm be like, hallelujah! <laughs> but here's the deal. Some people that have offended you probably don't even know that they've offended you or how much they've offended you. It's best to go ahead and deal with the situation. The Bible actually says this, that if you go and you deal with the situation without going to tell everybody, you know how we do. We start a phone ministry before we talk to the person that we actually need to talk to. If we could just go to that person and they forgive or they accept us, then we've gained a brother or a sister. And that is how we're able to walk harmoniously and be in unity. In fact, throughout the scripture, it says this, that a church that the Holy Spirit moves within is a church that is unified. If we can be a body of believers that are unified and the Spirit will move freely in the midst of us. And so forgiveness is for you and the people around you, not necessarily for the offender. And then number six is refusal to serve or be served. Because you mad, you ain't doing nothing. Y'all, y'all turn the O's into A's. I ain't doing Nathan. And you don't want to be served. How many people have you ever tried to pray for and they, they're just so mad they don't even want to be prayed for? See, all of these are characteristics of hard hearts. All of these are characteristics of getting to a place that, that, that our hearts are so hard that we don't really want to do life with anyone. We just want to continue to, to, to be alive but not necessarily live. And just because you woke up this morning doesn't mean that you're, that you're truly, truly living. You are just alive. And, and here's the deal. Nobody just wants to be alive. We got to get to a place of desiring to live and to live life more abundantly. To live life more abundantly. abundantly. I love the scripture because it says that he will put a new spirit within us. Now, when I read the word, I kind of read it from a literal standpoint, right? Like, I just want to, like, get all of it. And I'm like, okay, what are you really meaning? And I was like, you know, but so you're saying, God, that you're going to remove my spirit out and you're going to bring another one in? Like, you're just going to do, like, a spirit transplant? And, and the Holy Spirit began to give me a little bit of revelation on that. And, and what he was telling me is that, is that he was talking to his people. He was not speaking to an unchurched folks. He wasn't speaking to people who did not know him. He was, through Ezekiel, giving a word to his people. And he was saying, listen, the spirit that is within you, I am going to regenerate it to the point that your spirit will be like new again. I am not renew. I'm not going to renew you, but I'm going to take you to the place from when I knew you before the foundations of the heavens and the earth. And so if you're in this place and you've been walking with God for a period of time and you've walked away or you've become comfortable in your walk and, and God is saying, listen, despite some of your disobedience and despite some of your journey and some, despite some of the things that you've been doing, I am going to regenerate you to the place I am going to remove this hard heart from you and give you a heart of flesh where you can can experience peace again and you can experience joy again see some of us because our hearts our hearts are so hard that we've become to a place where we have lacked all that God has for us and we've rejected it and yeah it is for some people that are not believers the unchurched if you have not come to a place of fully recognizing who the Lord is as your Lord and Savior, when you make that decision, you will be made new. On the spot. Like, you don't have to have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree. You don't have to say 15 Ave Marias and 10 amens, be baptized in water, and speaking in tongues all at the same time. No, the word shows us that all we have to do is believe. When there were the two thieves beside Jesus, right? One believed and one didn't. And then Jesus told the one, today you will be with me in paradise. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. How many of y'all want newness in this place? Just newness. Just, just get into a place of saying, you know what, I just, I just need newness in my life. I've, I've allowed too much, too many areas of my life to be compromised. We allow the enemy to creep in into areas of our lives, and we don't even realize it. We give in an inch, and he takes a mile. But God wants to make all of those things new again in, in your life. Now, it goes on in Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 33 through 35. It says, does says the Lord God only, or excuse me, thus says the Lord God, on the day that I cleanse you from all your iniquities, I will also enable you to dwell in the cities and ruins shall be rebuilt. Are y'all hearing what this is saying? It says, on the day that you'll be cleansed of all your iniquities, the day is coming, you will, I will also enable you that you will be given permission to live within the places that were broken down, but God rebuilt. And it says in 34, the desolate land shall be tilled instead of lying desolate in the sight of all who pass by. Verse 35, so they will say this land that was desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. In other words, that the land that has been uh, like a wilderness, like a desert, like a dry place, it will be rebuilt. And the people that knew you before will look at you and say, how in the world when they lived a life and I know the things that they did and I know that they they shouldn't be at the place where they are right now. But God, like the word says, he prepares for you a place at the table in the presence of your enemy. God will rebuild the things around you that folks around you will begin to say, how in the world? Now, I know that some of you can look at your lifestyle right now and say, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look very promising. It looks like I'm heading in the wrong direction. But God is in the business of turning things around, not just for his people then, but even for his people right now. We have not lost hope. Don't lose hope. But we can't take 15 steps forward and 35 steps back. And even if it happens, we can't be so concentrated on the steps backward that we lose sight of the actual steps that we were able to take forward. God is wanting his people to dream again. He's wanting his people to just have visions again. He's wanting his people to evolve in their ministry gifts and the things that he has called them to. See, most of us think about, about uh, uh, what God has designed from us, and immediately we go, well, does he want me to be an usher? Does he want me to be a greeter in the parking lot? Does he want me to be in the children? No, listen, God calls us for various reasons. Some of us have a gift to write, and some of us have a gift in the business marketplace, and some of us have a mentoring gift. See, we have to understand that what God has called you to, that's what you must do. But with a hard heart, it's very difficult for us to be able to fully understand that. Why? Because the, the things that the world has brought into your life, or the enemy, has gotten you away from what God has put in you. And I look across the room, even the art and painting, what God has called individuals to that. I know individuals that are so gifted in the area of fixing vehicles, and that's what they do as a ministry to help families. They're like the car whisperer. I don't know how in the world, but they just have an amazing gift. Boy, what if you began to dream again just a little bit in regards to what God has called you to on this side of eternity? And don't do it for anyone else. Do it because that's what God has called you to. See, I don't get up here and preach week after week after week because of people. 
I do it week after week after week because it's what I've been called to. And as long as God is pleased with what I am doing, then I can't have my eyes focused on man. Because here's the reality. The retention of visitation at a church is nine, or excuse me, not, yeah, nine out of ten people, only one person will return to a church as a guest. And so I can't do it with my eyes focused on what happens on the inside of this room. My eyes must be focused on heaven. What are your eyes focused on in this year? What will your eyes be focused on in this year? See, because the devil has your number. He already knows what distracts you. How many of y'all have gone through things once, twice, three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, eight times? So he already knows what will distract you. And so quit being so surprised when the attack comes again. Quit being so surprised when the devil comes and attacks in the same area all over again. Begin to stand up against that dirty old rascal. And begin to fight for yourself. See, when we, we say we're uh, in a fight against the devil, some of y'all are running and he's the one fighting. I hope this doesn't, un- it doesn't offend anybody, but some of us are just spiritual sissies. And if the devil is going to square up against you, then you need to square up against him. And when he squares up against your family, you got to square up against him. And when he comes and squares up against your children, you got to go up and square against him. And it's, be, it, it's a time for us to begin to fight back. Instead of just laying down and allowing him to have his way in our homes, in our lives, in our minds. And begin to see yourself like God sees you. Because he sees you perfect. Despite. And so right where you are, begin to dream again. Begin to dream of that book that he's called you to write. Begin to dream of that business he's told you to start. Begin of that ministry he's told you to launch. Begin to dream. Begin to dream. That vacation that he's told you to take with your family years ago. Begin to dream of that promotion at your job. Begin to dream about that job that you are so afraid to apply for because you feel like you're going to be turned down. Begin to dream. Begin to dream. Begin to dream to take relationships to the next level. Begin to dream to step into the calling that God has for you. Begin to dream. See, there's a a family that's close to mine here in Oklahoma City. And the little boy, he he says he's going to be a preacher when he grows up. And every Christmas, all he wants is a little microphone, a pulpit, and church clothes preacher clothes and this is his decision from his age from just a a little young age this is his desire and he's he's walking in his journey my only prayer is God don't let him lose that see when I was growing up in the streets of, of New York City in the projects listen there was no houses and all of that stuff it was just a, a concrete jungle in New York City and my dream was this God I just want a house with a white picket fence I didn't know what that looked like all I knew is I saw it on Lassie and leave it to Beaver that gives away my age I didn't know what that was See, some of us don't dream it because we don't know what we don't know. But if God puts something on the inside of you, then we must pursue after it. Not because we have seen it, but because he's put it on the inside of us. And we can see it with our spiritual eyes, not just with our physical eyes. See, some of us, when we don't see it physically, we think like it's impossible. Some of us can actually see better with our eyes closed. With our eyes closed, I can I can fly and I can jump over mountains and I can jump over buildings and whew, with my eyes closed, I can see so much more. I can overcome so much more with my eyes closed. But then the moment I open my eyes, I I begin to see all of the barriers and all the things that I have to overcome. Maybe some of us need to live with our eyes closed more often than we 
do with our eyes open. How many of y'all are willing to dream in 2022? Yeah. Got to dream. And so I want to share with you guys just some goals that we have here. And we'll do this all month long. And so we want to establish community and build stronger families. And so in 2021, this is what 2021 brought us. 52 salvation, 31 baptisms in all of the year. We had, we have given away over $150,000 of gifts in kind from food, from World Vision in partnership with the pandemic, Pepsi products, and Feed the Children. Our average attendance for the year of 2021 was 175 adults, children, and youth. And so for our 2022 ministry efforts, we plan on uh, Sunday experiences being more dynamic, creative content, presentation, life, uh, excuse me, creative content and presentation, life applicable spirit-filled messages. And the goal for 2022, the leadership of this ministry has decided that we will aim at 500 attendees on a weekly service. For, you, for student ministries, this is youth, children, and uh, uh, nursery. Is developing the disciple youth and children, establish community, small groups, uh, their trust in each other and in God, and develop hearts of worshipers. Uh, to serve families, we will continue with our family groups. We want to develop nine strong family groups with 75% of Link Church to attend. And so if you're not a part of a, of a small group, get a part of a, become a part of a small group. Because there's community that happens in those small groups. In these small groups, some of these individuals, when somebody's affected by COVID, they're providing groceries and food for each other. And so be a part of a group that's going to help you uh, overcome some of the obstacles in your life. See, some of us, the problem is, is that we share some of our issues with some people that can't do nothing about it. They just co-sign your misery. And misery loves company. And get around people that are going to help you be a better you. We have uh, do family activities. We plan on doing a skating event again. My wife will not skate the next time so that she does not fall and bump her head. <laughs> um, park events, movie nights, uh, marriage groups. If you are a, in a, uh, no, if you are married, uh, we have a group on Facebook that we just started and we will continue to involve in this year. And it's called Linked to Love, uh, the marriage group. So if you have not gone on there yet, go on there. We'll be sharing marriage content all year long, um, not just from a pastoral position, but my wife is, uh, uh, has a master's degree in marriage and family therapy, and I uh, am certified in uh, life coaching. Uh, dating groups, uh, we have the link to love dating edition, right? So if you're dating or engaged, uh, you could be a part of that group. Uh, uh, go on Facebook and take a look. And, uh, and I know some people already have been like, well, how about the single folks? How comes the single folks? We're working on it. We're working on it. We're trying to find a way to start a singles group that doesn't turn into a hookup group. Come on, somebody. Y'all hear what I'm saying? All right, now. <laughs> um, addiction and restoration, we are looking at starting a Celebrate Recovery here at the Link Church, and we're in the process of that currently. On Thursday evenings at 7.30, a man that has a, an addiction uh, recovery group that is meeting right now. And we're looking at taking that to the next level. And we will start our freedom classes that we did last summer. We will do those again in this upcoming summer. Conferences that we're looking at having are conference, marriage conference, a men's nighting conference, which this past year, the men's group, we got together and, uh, and everyone was knighted. The families were here and every man received like a real life sword, right? Not sharpened because, you know. All right. um, and then the women's warrior cry conference that will take place again. Um, as far as church planting, uh, uh, we have uh, started a network of linked churches and we have uh, Link Church in Poconos that's getting uh, at ramping up now in Durant, Oklahoma, in Chickasha, which uh, Pastor Bill will be taking out. And we have a building there uh, in San Antonio and online. And we're looking at continuing to multi-site and also network with other churches that are saying, you know what, I don't want to do this alone. I want to be a part of a network that we're doing life together and we're sharing uh, best practices. Um, leadership training uh, with Advantage College and School of Ministry. Uh, we graduated Oscar, as you saw, 
Uh, but this year, we're looking at 15 individuals to be a part of Advantage College and School of Ministry. The School of Ministry, we will credential you at the end of the first year. And with Advantage College, we offer associate's, bachelor's, and master's degree. And so sign up and be a part of that. And then how we will impact our community is uh, build community. We already sponsored John Glenn Elementary School. Uh, with street evangelism, we have a couple of trucks. Uh, we're working on, we got the one up and running. It was down for a little bit. But this thing turns into a stage uh, and uh, with a sound system in it. And so we'll just go into a community, pop that stage wide open, turn on some music and begin to evangelize in that community and spread the gospel. I want to let you know that evangelism for us is not a part of our truth church growth process when we impact the community we don't expect any of them to come to church we want them to but we do it for the purpose of impacting them and setting a seed and allowing God to be the one to mature it and we just pray that they go somewhere amen we want new people new converts to just go somewhere where they feel comfortable in the name of Jesus and then connect with our local community we want people in our community to actually go to the church I don't know if there's anyone in here that is part of this local community right here that comes to this ministry. And I realize that we can, we can reach all of out there and miss it right here. And so we want to be a part of impacting our local community here. And also we, in partnership with churches in Mexico, we will be doing some missions trips to Mexico. How many of y'all like tacos? Well, you got to go on a missions trip to get a taco. All right. I promise you that it will be different than Taco Bell. But these are some of the things that we're looking at in the year of 2022. And we're looking at all of you being a part of that. We can't do it alone. We, we need people that are going to be a part of what God is doing through us. Now, there are some people that you can reach that I cannot reach. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Some of you look a little different than I. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty cool and all. Some of y'all are as cool. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. But there's people that only you can reach that I can't reach. And so we need your partnership and we need you in hearing what you've heard today to say, you know what, I see myself in that vision. And I'm going to work on this hard heart and believe that God is going to give me a heart of flesh. But I want to sow my gift, my time, and my talent to be a part of a great vision. Amen? And so I have in my pocket a poker chip. No, the Link Church is not starting a poker ministry. Sorry. Some of y'all were like, darn. I saw your eyes, Chris. You thought you almost thought we were doing it, right? <laughs> I'm teasing. <clears throat> and so... When you play poker, not that I've ever played poker, I don't know, I really don't know how to play poker. But, but I know that in what I've watched, if you are confident in the hand that you're, that you're holding, what are you willing to do? You're willing to bet it all, aren't you? Like if you believe that you're going to win the entire hand, the entire bet, you give all that you have and you say, I'm going all in. How many of you of you were playing poker and you knew that by the rules, if you were about to win the entire deal, you would bet all you had? How many of y'all by show of hands? Right? A good 50% of y'all, the rest of y'all think alike. Now, I'm not a betting man, but I know the rules of this particular game. And so the word of the Lord for the Link Church this year is just all in. We're just going all in. I know that the hand we have is a winning hand. And I don't have to really bet because I know that the back of the book says that we win. This is not a matter of if. I know that we win. But as a symbol of faith, using this as a reminder. And so we bought a, a bunch of these popes. Uh, poker chips if you guys could come on up and so this is what I want to do as a symbol of faith to you and as a call to action if you're willing to say Pastor G I want to be all in in this year come and get your poker chip
Hallelujah, God. So listen, don't go to Windstar. Don't go to Riverwind. You might not get a whole lot for this. But to the kingdom, it's everything. And so hold up your poker chip, those that have them in your hands. God, we just pray that in the name of Jesus, as a symbol of faith, we're saying, God, that we are, we're all in this year. All of our talents, our gifts, our resources, our finances, Father God, what we commit to, God, we are all in with you. We believe, God, that with you the best is yet to come. God, we believe that we have the winning hand. Your word shows us that it's a fixed fight we can't lose. Lord, your word shows us and tells us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Despite what's going on around the world, despite what attacks the enemy may bring, despite whatever processes we're going through, God, they cannot break us down. Because you are with us and you are for us, my God. We thank you that your word gives life. So, Lord, this year, we are all in. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Listen, if you have any prayer needs, we would love to pray with you. So send them on over. Our hope and desire is that the message was an impact to you and your children and your entire household. We take our motto here seriously. Why do life alone? Listen, there's no reason why you should do life alone. So come and be a part of do us. Let's do us. life together. <laughs>